So let's talk about three breaking legal stories that loosely represent the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good, Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. The bad, New York Attorney General asks a New York judge to hold Donald Trump in contempt. And the ugly, a tug of war between two branches of government over the 15 boxes of presidential records that Donald Trump stole and whisked away to Mar-a-Lago. Let's talk about all of that and more. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So there's quite a bit of news. So there's quite a bit of news. <clears throat> hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So there's quite a bit of news breaking on the legal front today, or I guess regarding stories involving Donald Trump, we could say there's quite a bit of news breaking on the illegal front today. Well, let's start on a sour note and then finish on a much sweeter note. Here's the first story. New York Attorney General asks court to hold Donald Trump in contempt. And that story begins, New York Attorney General Letitia James asked a New York court on Thursday to hold former President Donald Trump in civil contempt for allegedly failing to comply with a court order that he turn over certain documents for her investigation. Gee, I wonder if Donald Trump feels emboldened now that New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg deep-sixed Trump's criminal case for some reason other than the facts and the law. Well, we'll have to stay tuned for more developments on whether a New York judge decides to hold Donald Trump in contempt. Here's the second story reported today by the Washington Post. Headline. DOJ plans to investigate Trump's 15 boxes of records from Mar-a-Lago. Well, that starts out promising, doesn't it? Here's how that story begins. The Justice Department has begun taking steps to launch an investigation into former President Donald Trump's improper removal of presidential records to Mar-a-Lago, some of which were labeled top secret. People familiar with the matter said, the people, who spoke on the condition of anonymity, said the probe remained in the very early stages. It's not yet clear if Justice Department officials have begun reviewing the materials in the boxes or seeking to interview those who might have seen them or been involved in assembling or moving them. The news comes as the department faces increasing political pressure to disclose its plans in the case. On Thursday, House Oversight Chairwoman Carolyn B. Maloney accused the Justice Department of obstructing her committee's investigation into the 15 boxes of records Trump took to his estate in Palm Beach, Florida. Boy, that story took an ugly turn in a hurry, didn't it? The article continues. In a letter addressed to Attorney General Merrick Garland, Maloney alleges that, Justice De that the Justice Department is interfering with the investigation by preventing the National Archives and Records Administration from handing over a detailed inventory of the contents of the recovered boxes. If the department is planning an investigation, it might explain why it would not want lawmakers getting an inventory of the materials. It's unclear to what extent the Justice Department already has assessed the inventory of boxes, which the National Archives arranged to retrieve from Mar-a-Lago in January, including documents clearly marked as classified. The Justice Department, though, has been in touch with the Archives about moving its own inquiry forward, people familiar with the matter said. So friends, that story started out promising, right, with the Washington Post headline reading, DOJ plans to investigate Trump's 15 boxes of records from Mar-a-Lago, and then it took an ugly turn. 
to the January 6th committee, the Congressional Committee investigating the insurrection, accusing the Department of Justice of interfering with their investigation because they need to know what's in those boxes that Donald Trump, I'll say it again, stole and whisked away to Mar-a-Lago in violation of federal law. Here's how CNN is reporting the same story. Headline, Justice Department blocking National Archives from sharing details on Mar-a-Lago boxes with Congressional Probe. So it feels like, if not conflicting reports, you know, different angles of the same story. So let's try to unpack this. And friends, bear with me because this is just going to be a stream of consciousness attempt to figure out what in the world is going on with respect to two co-equal branches of government that, for gosh sakes, should be working together to try to save our democracy should be working together to try to hold accountable Donald Trump and his criminal associates for trying to kill our democracy. And yet now they're involved in a tug of war over what may very well be deeply incriminating evidence. So let's start with the fact that the January 6th committee, the select committee investigating the Capitol attack, has interviewed more than 800 witnesses. And these 800 witnesses have provided hours and hours and hours of information and thousands and thousands of documents of evidence that sheds light on what in the world Donald Trump and his corrupt associates did on and around January 6th. And by all accounts, the January 6th Congressional Committee has been going after it hard. There are a number of people that they wanted to interview, a number of people that we all know have information relevant to Donald Trump's misconduct, his crimes. Guys like Steve Bannon, Mark Meadows, Peter Navarro, Dan Scavino, and all four of those individuals defied congressional subpoenas, committed the crime of contempt of Congress. Congress is the victim there. And all four have been referred for criminal prosecution to a co-equal branch of government, the Department of Justice, who's going to vindicate the crimes against Congress, right? Well, they did take some time, but ultimately they indicted Steve Bannon. Now, we're going to set Navarro and Scavino to the side because they've just been referred for prosecution. Let's give OJ, DOJ a week or two to get those men indicted. But Mark Meadows was referred months ago for criminal prosecution for his crime against Congress, and DOJ has done nothing. So they're not really helping Congress in a way that they could help Congress by holding accountable the people who are committing crimes against Congress to cover up Donald Trump's crimes. So on the, on the, on the other hand, what we now know they're doing is they're blocking Congress from getting information like the 15 boxes of presidential records Donald Trump, you know, whisked away to Mar-a-Lago illegally. They're blocking Congress's attempts to get that information. Why? Well, the reporting says because DOJ might sort of kind of want to start investigating that someday. It's not clear that they are. Notwithstanding that Washington Post headline, when you dig in a little bit, you see that, yeah, DOJ is beginning to dip a toe into a possible investigation of those 15 boxes of presidential records, but at the same time, they're refusing to let Congress see them as part of the January 6th committee investigation, so much so that the J6 committee wrote a letter saying you're interfering with our election, uh, excuse me, with our investigation of Trump's attempts to overturn the election, DOJ. You're interfering in our investigation. You're not just not supporting it by declining to indict Mark Meadows, but you're interfering in our investigation by not even letting us see relevant evidence because someday you might want to open an investigation. 
I'm frustrated, friends. Yes, I'm frustrated. The branches of government should be working together to protect our democracy and to hold Donald Trump accountable for his crimes. And yet, this is what we get. You know, interbranch squabbling, tugs of war over information that's sitting there that would show Donald Trump committed crimes. We know there were crimes committed by him taking top secret information, national security information, classified information in violation of the Presidential Records Act and hiding it down in Mar-a-Lago. And doing what? Making copies? Selling copies to Putin? Who knows? I know if it were you and, or if it were me <laughs> engaging in that kind of conduct, you know, we would already be at, you know, federal camp sleepaway, locked up, which is frankly where we would belong if we stole national security information, top secret documents. I'm frustrated, friends. I'm frustrated. I know I, I, I often say we need to exercise patience. We need to give DOJ time to build a case, a strong case, concerning the conspiracy to commit offenses against the United States, the insurrection. But, you know, the government needs to do better. I hope we can all agree our federal government needs to do better. At least it has done better in one concrete way. Let's finish on a high note. It's going to take a good bit of effort to climb up out of the ditch in which we find ourselves based on some of this reporting, but we're going to finish on a high note with Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson giving hope, giving a concrete example to every young African-American girl. You too can be Vice President of the United States and the Supreme Court Justice. That is a good thing. That, that's progress. You know, that's our country at its finest and its proudest. And that's what I hope we all aspire to get back to. An America that we can be proud of. An America that holds accountable its high government officials when they commit crimes. Particularly crimes designed to bring an end to our democracy. Friends, as always, please stay safe. Please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.